And like Keir Starmer just said this week during London Tech Week, we want to be AI creators, not AI consumers. So I think in their minds, maybe this is a viable trade-off. We, we skimp a little bit on housing for the ability to have more indigenous innovation. But I think the thing that is often left out of that conversation is this is a false trade-off. People think that you need colossal data centers to build AI systems. You actually do not. This is specifically the approach that OpenAI decided to take. But actually, before OpenAI started d building large language models and generative AI systems at these, these colossal scales, the trend within the AI research community was going the opposite direction towards tiny AI systems. And there was all this really interesting research looking into how small your data sets could be to create powerful AI models and how little computational resources you needed to create powerful AI models. So there were, there were interesting papers that I wrote about where you could have a couple hundred images to create highly performant AI systems, or uh, you could have AI systems trained on your mobile device. That's like a sync, not even a, a one computer chip on running on your mobile device. And OpenAI took a, an approach that is now using hundreds of thousands of computer chips to train a single system. And those hundreds of thousands of computer chips now are consuming, you know, city city loads of energy. And so if we divorced the concept of AI progress with this scaling paradigm, you would realize then you can have housing and you can have AI innovation. But once again, there's not a lot of independent experts that are actually saying these things. Most AI experts today are employed by these companies. And this is basically the equivalent of if most climate scientists were being bankrolled by oil and gas companies. Like they would tell you things that are not in any sense of the word scientifically grounded, but just good for the company. Mm. 